So good day everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Rowell and I had the privilege of being an apprentice at Jaguar from 1956 to uh, 1960. And then I worked the company uh, uh, in the most of Europe as a, a service engineer and uh, before leaving in 1969. But uh, the, the title of the presentation is Jaguar uh, E-Type 60th Anniversary and it's a brief history of Jaguar sports cars from 1948 to 1961. But Jaguar's first sports car was the XK120. It was one of Sir William Lyon's greatest designs. Uh, he was the uh, founder of the company in the 1920s and uh, before and ran the company with a very strong hand. Oh, the XK120, uh, a picture followed, 120,000 were built and the majority of them for export. The uh, XK120, like uh, many uh, more until 1974, engines was a 3.4 liter twin cam six cylinder and it had it was a head, way ahead of its time for a mass produced car uh, with uh, dual overhead camshafts two SU carburetors and it evolved through from 3.4 to 3.8 and later to 4.2 liters by the end of its reign in 1974. The XK120 won many rallies and races and I just want to highlight one, uh, which was the Irish Tourist Trophy race in September 1950, where 21-year-old Sterling Moss finished a dramatic first in pouring rain, and it's when he really made a name for himself. And other victories in 50, 51 and 52 was the Alpine Rally by Ian Appleyard. Uh, Jaguar believed that uh, racing uh, improved the breed and improved sales, and speed was it of the essence. So just to recall, the say major speed, uh, 1950, for 24 hours, 107 miles an hour, in, in the French Montlhery Autodrome. Uh, in 1952, 100 miles an hour, for seven days and nights, again at Montlhery, and then, at the time, a record for a production car in 1953, 172 miles an hour on the Brussels Ostend motorway in Belgium, driven by the famous test driver Norman Dewitt. Uh, the C Type 3.4 litre 53 was built between 1951 and 1953. Uh, Bill Hayes was the chief engineer who had started with Jaguar in 1936 as the right-hand man to William Lyon. And the aerodynamicist was the famed Malcolm Steyer, who came from Bristol Aircraft Company. It had an aluminum body and uh, 205 horsepower. It won Le Mans in 1951. And in 1952, uh, it ran three cars, but unfortunately they all overheated. But the big victory was in 53 at Le Mans again for 24 hours and it had four-wheel Dunlop disc brakes for the first time ever to help finish first, second, and third. Uh, just a photograph here of the C-Type uh, with its remarkable Malcolm Sayer body uh, with the uh, front tip foot up and uh, uh, picture stays all. Uh, this is the uh, next two slides are about a remarkable car which was called the C to D-Type prototype. It was Malcolm Sayers' masterpiece uh, with a superb oval cross section, which gave it a very low frontal area. And eight years later, it would evolve into the E type. And on the Brussels motorway uh, on October 53, uh, again, Norman Jewett uh, ran at 178 miles an hour over one mile and broke another record is a picture of that uh, wonderful car. Uh, the top left is the rear view, and uh, uh, the right center is the Brussels test on the motorway. You see a Volkswagen going the opposite direction, and it had a plastic bubble for streamlining. The uh, bottom left is William Haynes in the first unpainted prototype of the 1954 D-Type. 
He was a very proud engineer at that time, and I had the pleasure of working with him, and I still correspond with his son, Jonathan Haynes, these days. It was the evolution of the sports cars to the XK140, manufactured between 54 and 57. Upgrades from the 120 were particularly moving the firewall uh, three inches forward for more driver legroom, and it got a four-speed gearbox, uh, got an over an overdrive and a three-speed Ford Warner automatic, uh, brand new in Britain at that time, uh, made under license, was an option. Uh, the XK140 was very popular with uh, bodybuilders. The red car on the left is by Frua, an Italian bodybuilder. It has a very avant-garde wraparound windshield copied from many American designs at the time and uh, it has an imitation uh, miniature Jaguar grille at the front, a beautiful Barani wire wheel. You notice that the car still has drum brakes. The car on the right, of course, is the XK140, which at that time uh, still had drum brakes, and this brakes would very soon come. Um, the XK140 base model kept the 3.4 liter, but the power was raised. And if you ordered a C-type racing cylinder head, which was painted red, it went up to 210 brake horsepower. And uh, in the US, uh, the car was called the uh, XK140 MC. Um, in 1956, uh, the 140 was indeed the first sports car anywhere to be offered, as I mentioned before, with a full board transmission. It's uh, the echo to the XK150, uh, produced from 57 to 61. Initially, it was only a fixed head coupe and a drop head, and they introduced a roadster uh, uh, next. And the, the picture here shows the uh, the uh, roadster on the right. It had uh, this beautiful sort of uh, drop down uh, door, and was a very popular car. Fixed head coupe on the left in, in red, and uh, these are just wonderful cars. The disc brakes uh, transformed them about the uh, 150 uh, performance initial um, let's say that the initial cars didn't have this brakes but they very quickly got them and they had larger carburetors one and three quarter inch carburetors said one and a half and the x 150 s got two inch carburetors uh, all from su and uh, then in 1960 uh, the engine was bored out to 3.8 liters and from the, which and uh, borrowed from the Mark 9 sedan. The Jaguar body by Bertoni, this is the body, the rumors that it would have replaced uh, uh, the XK1 and uh, in fact, uh, people thought it was going to be the E-Type, but it was a very elegant car and uh, they built uh, five of them and uh, they were sold to private owners and they win all sorts of concours now in, um, in uh, sporting events. The D-Type, uh, my personal favorite car, originally conceived between 54 and 57, uh, built between 54 and 57. 71 were built in total, which included 16 of the beautiful XKSS, which had a, uh, a, a normal windshield and was actually a two-seater. It was designed specifically to win them all, and uh, Malcolm Sayer then again had a big hand in the, in the uh, body shape, and uh, it had a new uh, all synchro mesh full speed gearbox and uh, the beautiful body was uh, a favorite of everybody. It dropped SU carburetors and took on uh, the Italian Weber carburetors uh, which Ferrari and Maserati used and the power went up to 245 brake horsepower. And in 1965 the Le Mans rules changed and they had to put a full width windscreen and a longer nose on them. Next slide shows an uh, overview of the uh, cutaway of the frame. Uh, you can see here the wraparound uh, windshield, the, uh, the tail fin, and uh, the unique uh, bolted on front tubular cross, uh, uh, tubular subframe. Very stiff and the, uh, the, the one piece hinged upon it. Next picture shows uh, the difference between the 1954 with the original uh, uh, one, which is a one-seater uh, bodywork, basically. Uh, 
got a long nose in 1955, and uh, you see the, uh, the shape here. And in 1956, the Jaguar went out of racing, and a Curier Cost, the Scottish racing team, ran these blue ones, which is depicted here. Here you can see the two seats which, and the full width windshield um, uh, to boot. And the, art, the artist, Tim Lokes, signed my copy of this picture, which I'm proud of. Uh, stunning uh, racing results of the D-Type. Uh, 54, three ran um, and um, uh, managed to finish second, only uh, two minutes behind Ferrari, and uh, had the fastest speed on the Bolsan five mile straight of uh, just under 173 miles an hour. Uh, first and second at the Reims uh, 54 race, uh, 12 hour. Uh, first and third in the 55 Le Mans 24 hour race, uh, where there was tragically a terrible accident, the worst in history, killed 80 people uh, when a French car flew off the track. 1956, uh, 24 hour Le Mans, six ran, uh, first and fourth finished, and that was when the factory ended racing. And as I said before, the Courier Cost finished in 57, first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. So it was a stunning uh, period that achieved 100% to William Lyons' results. The next picture is the XKSS in all its beauty. Uh, it had a, a small levy track at the back. It had a, a very uh, rather crude hood, but it was a wonderful grand touring car for the 16 owners who were lucky enough to buy one. I was present on February the 12th, 1957, when a factory fire, uh, the paint shop, the paint shop caught fire, and there was about approximately a, a good quarter of the service areas lost. See all the burnt out bodies here, uh, Mark 7s and 8s and, and, and uh, uh, each types and so forth. But remarkably, within, uh, within 36 hours, the factory was running again. So um, that was a uh, unfortunate hiccup. Uh, talking about the evolution from the D type to the E type in, from 57 to 61. In 57, the E1A uh, uh, prototype, based on the D type, originally had a 2.4 litre engine, but that was four cylinder, but that proved to be uh, uh, not powerful enough and it had problems, so they simply took over the 3.8 litre. Uh, in 1958, the more rules changed. Uh, to three litre, uh, and regrettably, the E1A prototype was scrapped. In 1959, E2A, I'll show you pictures later of that, these car uh, had a new three litre, six cylinder aluminium engine, and uh, the performance uh, still had performance issues, so they went and fitted the 3.8 litre again. Uh, Cunningham ran the car at Le Moyne 1960. In 61, E2A was rescued by a, a, a British family, the Woodleys and the Griffith families, uh, for a private museum. And in 2008, uh, E2A was sold to a, a French um, owner where it still resides. So there's one left. This is the photograph of the E1A prototype being tested. Uh, this is uh, 27 is a uh, this is the E2A prototype. Uh, the Geneva launch of the iconic Jaguar E-Type. Uh, the Geneva show with global press coverage, unbeatable combination of beauty, price, and performance. Uh, there were hard to find test routes for the 150 mile an hour maximum speed. Uh, 72,000 were eventually built in series one, two, and three between 61 and 75. And of the E-Type uh, 2 plus 2 coupe, it used in 66, uh, 5,600 were built. A remarkable uh, story. Uh, this is the 77 RW, the British Racing Green prototype uh, convertible. And the, on the right, the silver gray uh, coupe, with the William Lions proudly standing uh, second on the right. And this was at the Geneva show. Uh, a decorative uh, New York model, uh, the 61 American launch um, at the New York Motor Show. Um, it sold the show and 47,000 people squeezed onto the Jaguar stand in that first day. 
which is pretty amazing. And uh, among the greatest automobiles, uh, the E-Type remains the collector's and enthusiast's favorite. Sir William's Lion's eye for style was evident with his first SS 100 sports cars in the 30s and earlier in the 20s, and which set the stage for the SK 120. The C-Type race of Wonder Mon 24 hours, uh, 51 and 53, and the D-Type uh, won uh, five Le Mans races, which uh, is a record never before been beat. And so this uh, it, it ends my presentation for today, and I hope this has been inter of interest to you, and uh, we wish Jaguar all the best in the future. Thank you.